Ooh, excellent. Oh, yeah, uh, my speakers over live. Oh, yeah. Hi. It's the last hour Ooh. of Garbage Day. <laughs> I've got a song. I'm sorry, I didn't realize that was the song. I would have kept it. <laughs> Yay! Yay! I thought Boost was just like getting, like getting himself going. <laughs> I think that's all the go he has left. I, I, I feel bad now for Get talking over go, the song. Done, caught up and went. Shut up. <laughs> Thank you, Victor. Yay! Oh. <laughs> All right, well, welcome to our 24 of 24, and that means that it's time for WikiHow! Yay! Yay! We made our way all... Yay! <laughs> oh, Victor's here. Let me, please, let me add you to the list of readers there, Victor. <laughs> Um, uh... I disagree with Lemon on that point. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll leave you out. Uh, yeah, so uh, so uh, in this final hour, uh, in this final hour, uh, I'm gonna see because uh, my Xanax wore off recently, so I'm gonna see how much beer I can drink <laughs> before this hour ends. Right. Uh, but meanwhile, it's <laughs> a wonderful idea, Levin. Yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> um, so, uh, so. Uh, what do we start with? Oh, that's right, Isfahan. Um, I want to know how to ride a roller coaster. Will you tell me how to ride a roller coaster, please? Absolutely. There are, well, there are steps and parts to this. It's, riding a roller coaster is trickier than you think, folks. Okay. Clearly. Nothing gets your blood pumping faster than a roller coaster. If you've never ridden one, getting over the nerves and strapping yourself in can be intimidating, but learning a bit about the different kinds of roller coasters and what to expect out of your ride can make the whole thing a lot less scary. It should be fun. If you want to ride a roller coaster, you can learn how to pick up the right one. S stay safe and have a great time. Coaster. Yeah. All right, step one. Uh, it, well, part one is you got to pick a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. Step one of that is learn about the different styles of roller coasters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, <clears throat> some riders prefer old school wooden coasters for a vintage feel, while others prefer newer, super fast, upside down behemoths to test their metal. Yeah. <laughs> of sitting there. The choice is completely up to you, but it's good to get some sense of what to expect from different kinds of coasters. There's wooden roller coasters, they're the oldest and most classic types of coasters, and usually the kind you want to start on. You're oper operated with a traditional chain lift mechanism. This is all important information if you want to ride a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. Which the cars are lifted to a peak and dropped to allow gravity to force the cars through the rest of the turns and valleys at high speed. Mm -hmm, Almost mm -hmm. like they're coasting down the... Okay. <laughs> it's, it's, it's also a fun and bumpy ride. These usually won't go upside down. <laughs> if they are, something has gone terribly wrong. <laughs> 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 Just asking the question of the wiki. Yeah. How my roller coaster is upside down and wasn't meant to. Please advise. How do I write an upturned roller coaster? Uh, okay. Uh, the Texas Giant, the American Eagle at Six Flags America, and the Beast at Kings Island are all examples of classic wooden coasters. Also, Thunderbolt is a common name for wooden coasters. That's important. <laughs> steel roller coasters feature complex steel tracks offering somewhat smoother rides and more maneuverability as well as the ability to invert the riders, incorporating loops, corkscrews, and all kinds of other exciting motions. Ooh, Most exciting. modern roller coasters, including the classic King Daka, the Millennium Force, Steel Dragon 2000, and the Storm Coaster are steel coasters. They'll also be in Boston this weekend, so I, I, <laughs> yeah, so I think you should check them out. We are Steel Coaster. <laughs> Uh, check out the different kinds of seats on coasters. Like how many, how many 
freaking <laughs> amusement parks do you have nearby? Hmm, <laughs> yes, interesting. Mm, oh, this one is provocative. Oh, <laughs> there's a certain je ne sais quoi over here. <clears throat> okay, so there's um, there's floorless coasters, for example. The, these seats allowed the rider's legs to hang free, simulating an intense falling experience. While standing coasters lock the riders in place in an upright position. Wing uh, coasters. Hmm? Hey, 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 uh, hey, uh, I have ADD now. Uh, hey, Jimmy Franks. <laughs> Jimmy Franks, I want to know how to make warrior cat fan fiction. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm, good. Uh, I'm going to tell you all about that. Great. Right. That sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, so some warrior, some warrior cat fan there fiction. You know. I want to know how to make it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, it's very simple. Uh, uh, if you think of an idea, a warrior, the idea can be about a cat already in the clans, a, cl a cat like Rusty growing to become a warrior, or even life in Star Clan. It can be anything. <laughs> I mean, you hear those to make sure it's not something cliched. <laughs> that means something that's used too much. Most people will roll their eyes and stop reading if you write a story about a cat with special powers that must fight to save their clan. Am I right? Oh, I'm man. Never, it's, never. It is written about too much, and it's not very interesting. <laughs> uh, let's come up with a plot that's interesting. Think of an adventure you might actually want to read. <laughs> the thing to do now is brainstorm, 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 so you'll have plenty of good material to use later. Um, after you've written some ideas down about your plot, think about making your characters. <laughs> this is the option if you the write. illustration for like the sample character is named Snowflake. Yeah. Uh, Snowflake's <laughs> tail and Snowflake's skills is he's a very good hunter. Uh, the best character has good qualities, but is also flawed too. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, now, most people make the mistake of flaws as being, oh, my cat can't hunt very well. So it's okay that she's attractive and the leader and the best cat ever. These are referred to as Mary Sue's in the case of females. No. <laughs> and Gary Stew's is used when referring to males. The best characters are lovable and great, but also have setbacks that make the reader understand and identify with them. Mm -hmm. Step three, mm -hmm. create a new clan. This is also optional. Be careful when creating clan names, things that aren't quite natural like Magic Clan or something long and awkward like Aurora Clan are all things that you want to avoid. Do something natural like Ice Clan. <laughs> Step four, now it's time to start planning your fan fiction. Take all the ideas you've jotted down so far and try to pick and arrange the ones you want to use into the story. Don't be afraid to improvise or start over with ideas and arranging. Number five, time to write your fanfic. Start with a bang by beginning with something exciting but relative to the story. Uh, once you've finished the first chapter of the prologue, move on to the next chapter. And remember that lots of physical action scenes in your stories aren't bad. Just use them sparingly. And if it's crucial to the story, write out a prophecy. If you have one at all, make it good. For example, if a cat named Grasspaw is the main hero and Yellowpaw is evil, don't say something like, the grass shall defeat Yellow. Oh, because God. that kind of gives away the ending. <laughs> God. <laughs> Something like, when the color of the sun threatens the clan, the blade of what grows from the earth shall rise and defeat it. Step four, don't write like absolute shit. Write like mostly shit. <laughs> I mean, that would be young adult novel. <laughs> About cats in general. Uh, Apparently so there's a warrior write... cat prophecy generator. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, think about your story's climax, and then number nine, End the story. <laughs> Yay! Hey, Yay! Frank West. Frank West? That's me. How do I act like a vampire? Uh, how to act like a vampire. Uh, whether you're attending a costume party, a live-action role-playing game, or right, trying out a new... Talk vampires. Nice. <laughs> you want to try on some dark makeup? And... Oh! Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Uh, step one, dressing like a vampire. Dress in dark colors with red accents. Vampires like dark colored clothing, such as Count Dracula's black silk cape. However, they often accent the dark colors with a hint of red. For instance, Marceline the Vampire Queen wears red boots alongside her gray tank top and tight-fitting jeans. That is what makes her a vampire. It is, that's why she is a vampire. Vampire clothing is generally dark, often black, with some color relief, often red, red, or gray. Dye your hair dark on the top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. Choose red boots with an attitude. Mm -hmm. 
if you're in a LARP, you might want to check with the organizers to see if there are any costume guidelines. <laughs> Damn it, Gary, we're not doing Vampire the Masquerade. <laughs> Choose a vintage style. If you want to look like a vintage vampire character, such as Count Dracula, you'll want to look at some images of traditional vampire costumes. Since the Victorian era is a strong influence, you want to choose dark colors and traditional attire, such as a three-piece suit for men. If you are dressing as a male vampire character, you'll definitely need a cape, vest, and possibly a tuxedo. Mm. If you are dressing in a female vampire costume, you may need an elegant dress, belt, and capelet. <laughs> What's an elegant capelet look like? Uh, like a normal capelet, only you left it at home. <laughs> Step green and pink like a watermelon <laughs> god every one of these these act like a vampire picture is fucking stupid. really really good step three try a burlesque style don't you can combine the art of burlesque with vampire style for existence actress heidi klum wore a cobweb cape with a bleeding heart on her corset at a halloween party yeah, at a Halloween party. I wonder if it, it, does context matter at all? No. Don't worry, I've got some really useful advice it's you haven't cited. Don't worry. There's some really good advice you haven't heard yet. To oh, achieve good. this look, you'll need red lipstick, eyeliner, heels, and red nails. Hey, this is all great. Uh, Frank West acting like a vampire, but I want to act like a vampire in a LARP. Uh, can you go down to Method 3 acting <laughs> in a live-action role-playing game? <laughs> <laughs> Which game you want to play? If you're participating in a live-action role-playing game, you may have already been assigned a particular vampire to play. However, if the event is more open-ended, you may get to choose a particular character. If you are not sure which vampire, you could find some inspiration by reading vampire books or watching a vampire movie. Yeah, but what's the next step? Play unfair as a vampire character and as a player. And fair as a player. During the LARP, you should always have a reason for making a move against another character in the game. <laughs> you could always play fair and avoid cheating. That said, you could have fun playing the role of a vampire, which made it cruel, cruel or unfair things like blood sucking or killing another player. And what's the next step? Highlight the narcissism of your vampire <laughs> character. Yes, of your vampire character. <laughs> Shifty eyes. <laughs> Hmm. Vampires are typically described as narcissistic or self-serving. To highlight this trait, try walking with an air of authority, with your shoulders back and your head held high. Bullet point, you should only be interested in talking about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yep. well, well, vampires are really charming, and that's how you be the most charming, is by talking excessively. Not about real vampire! <laughs> Method four, behaving like a vampire. Step one, work on your soul-piercing gaze. If you are taking inspiration from a film like Dracula, you should work on your soul-piercing gaze. <laughs> Try to look right through people. To achieve this, achieve this effect, you should practice an unblinking gaze, which you can hold for what is seemingly longer than humanly possible. Oh, boy. <laughs> Don't be surprised if people consider you to be off with the fairies rather than perceptive. It's a hard look to pull off, as sometimes you can look dazed rather than intent. Uh, Frank West, or sorry, yeah. sorry, uh, John Toast. John Toast. Yes. Uh, you had a uh, WikiHow document you wanted to share with us, isn't that right? Yes, I want to let everybody know how to make people believe you're secretly, <laughs> secretly a mob. <laughs> Secretly handsome. You're secretly Hanson. <laughs> I'm secretly Olive Hanson. I'm sorry, I had to let you know. No, I had my suspicions. <laughs> How to make people believe you're secretly an artificial intelligence. Many Whoa. people for a joke are trying to make people believe they're a vampire, Frank, or a werewolf, <laughs> or an extraterrestrial from who knows where. But what about a computer slash AI? It's actually more fun than you'd expect. Give it a go. So step one, set the scenario in your head. You're a computer, but what's your purpose? Why are you in a human body? Be adventurous. Keep a mental note of everything you think of. Step two, use long, fancy words that nobody has heard of. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Step three, when a teacher asks you a question in class, answer it with as much information as you can. If you feel you can't answer it, say in a flat voice, I am sorry, I do not understand. Why? Make sure you don't sound cheap. 
Oh, God. <laughs> Damn it. Step talk, four. Talk like the girl from Small Wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Replace words with, like, yes with affirmative and no with <sighs> negative. <laughs> Wait, why step are five. You doing a robot that, yeah. mm -hmm. Lemon, you need this step. Try not to show your emotions. This takes practice, but it's really effective. <laughs> step six. Research trivia in your spare time. It can be about anything you want. For example, if you like a type of sport, you can research random facts about it. <laughs> uh, Number uh, seven. On occasion, talk to friends in a monotone fashion. Um, do this for an hour and see if they notice. If they do, oh. they're most likely to ask, are you all right? Or why are you talking like that? Return to your own voice and say, what are you talking about? Creep everyone out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight. Act curious when people talk about human interests. <laughs> What is this thing you call Harry Potter? <laughs> Number nine. Try hard to get really high levels in class. If you're not the kind of person who wants to bother with all that hassle or look like a nerd, then just try a bit harder than you usually do. Look, I want to I wanna be an android, but not a nerdy android. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be a jock android like the Terminator. Cool jock android. Okay, number 10 is show a big interest in technology. Uh, I don't know if we have a flip phone. <laughs> yeah, somebody with a twist, one of those twisty flip phones. <laughs> what is this device? Uh, but number 11 is because watch and listen to AIs in fiction. GLaDOS from the Portal series, HAL 9000 from 2001 A Space Odyssey, and even Mr. Smith from the Sarah Jane Adventures <laughs> are all great examples to start with. Listen to the way they talk, the words they use, etc. Uh, Achilles. And finally, oh, sorry, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 nope, nope. Finally, do have a sense of humor and do use sarcasm. Many AIs in fiction like to make a witty joke and use sarcasm in an attempt to fit in with the human universe. Now you are a robot. You're welcome. Achilles. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm already pretty cool at school. Pretty mm -hmm. cool at school, but I wish I was a little bit cooler at school. Is there anything that you can uh, do with that? Well, I think there's two options for that. But okay, well then one choose you... which one you like better. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you how to act like Naruto. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Believe it. Behaving like Naruto. <laughs> One, play pranks on others. Try playing lighthearted pranks on other people, like prank calls or practical jokes, to mimic Naruto's trickster side. <laughs> A good Naruto-style prank is that anything that catches someone else by surprise. The character Kakashi calls Naruto the number one ninja in surprising people. Footnote. Uh, make sure you don't do anything harmful to another person or hurt feelings with the prank. Even Naruto matures and grows out of being a prankster later in the series, acknowledging that he was simply looking for attention. All right, two. Move quickly and rush through things. Run, like, not... an, run like a fucking idiot. Oh, the picture's run doing... like a big dumb idiot. Oh my god, the picture's doing the Naruto run and it's so good. Yeah. No, run like you rule school. Adopt Naruto's hyperactive personality by running and generally moving very quickly from place to place and activity to activity. Try Naruto's typical running style by tilting your head and upper body forward and putting your arms straight back behind your body to run forward. Suffer and now a concussion. I expect everyone in the stream to do this now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm doing it. You can, you can <laughs> yeah, also try out right some here. of Naruto's ninja moves. It's best to learn proper grappling moves from a certified martial arts instructor, just like Naruto goes to an academy to learn his ninja moves. Hey, martial arts <laughs> instructor, I want to be like the guy on the cartoon with the cat face. Um, it's a I'm fox gonna, face. I'm going to skip Stop down. I'm telling to you not to run like this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to skip down to speaking like Naruto. Okay, good, good. but uh, the, draw the drawing for eat ramen noodles is lovely. <laughs> Do, like, I don't do know what, what you is, do but... now, but just, just just everything's followed with believe it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. From Speaking like Naruto. One, use the catchphrase Date Bayo. Oh my Try god. out Naruto's catchphrase, which he says frequently throughout the shit TV show. <laughs> oh my god, that picture. <laughs> that... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's... Suffer I'm through sorry. ramen. I'm sorry, go ahead. Funny All right. that picture. Datebayo doesn't translate to any sensical phrase in Japanese or English, but it's generally taken to be an emphasis on his speech as it portrays a childish mischievous quality. In early episodes of the dubbed English version of the anime, the catchphrase is, is translated to believe it to approximate the meaning and match the lip movements of the animation. <laughs> this next picture is really good. <laughs> Two, 
Assert your determination and achievement. Use phrases Naruto would say to back up his beliefs like, I will never give up and this is my ninja way. You don't need to say things that aren't true or come across as arrogant. These confident phrases are just meant to emphasize determined behavior, hard work, and striving for success. Absolutely. Uh, okay. Um, uh, Jack Chick. Jack Chick. Hi. Jack Chick. Uh, what, what do you have? There's so much in the Discord. I'm not able to keep it straight. What, what do you have there? You know, Lemon, I feel like the last one was a little stimulating and, you know, uh, it's, you know, the end of the, the thing. We want to kind of mellow back. So I'm going to teach you how to measure luggage. What? Uh, so, well, it's important to know how to measure luggage. Right. So, you don't want to get charged We're going to tone it down a little bit here. We're going to measure our luggage. Yeah. So Good. If you're taking a flight somewhere, some chances are you're going to need to bring some luggage along. Since airlines have requirements to the size and weight of the baggage, you can dig in the plane. You'll need to measure your luggage correctly. Okay. <laughs> so, so damn for, it. So step one. <laughs> fuck. Is selecting the right bag. Right. Okay. So right. the first step to measuring your luggage is, you know, uh... making sure that you have a bag. <laughs> Check your airline's bag requirements. Each airline has a slightly different requirements for carry, checked and carried on baggage. You'll be able to find that air, that information on your airline's website, usually under frequently asked questions. Jesus. Keep in mind that the airline's website will have the most up-to-date information. Why didn't we save this to the end? I feel like this is a really, really good way to go out. Uh, you know, start the show with a show stop. All of the time. <laughs> Number two, make sure bag extensions are within the size requirements. Some bags have a little zipper around the edge that doesn't open into a new section, but instead extends your bag. If you think you'll need to use this extension, make sure to measure your bag with it unzipped and extended. Jesus. Fuck. I'm measuring my bag right now. <laughs> Number three. <laughs> Unzipped and extended, if you know what I mean. I don't. I have no idea. That was was two hours ago, Jimmy Franks. (laughs) Number three, double check the measurements retailers list on their websites. A lot of luggage retailers will advertise that their bags are carry on compliant. They'll also list measurements. It seemed to fit with most airlines carry on size requirements, but always measure the bag on your own before you pack it and take it to the airport. Different airlines have different requirements and retailers don't always have. Oh, I want that. I want that one right now. Boots. Boots. (laughs) Boots. I want that one right now. Okay. Wait, you don't want to hear about step four? Measure your bag. I think I've learned learned what I need to. (laughs) What do what do you want to talk about? Uh, um, I want to I want to teach you how to complain about secondhand smoke in apartments. <laughs> <laughs> secondhand smoke smells awful. Here I need to move this to my other window. There, secondhand smoke smells awful, but it can also cause serious health problems. These problems can be even worse if you have health conditions such as asthma. However, all leases carry with them a, com- a covenant. Is that the right word? Well, sure. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a thing. Okay. Yeah. On WikiHow, right? Sure. Yeah. Uh, that allows for your peaceful use of your rented space. Uh, to complain about secondhand smoke in your apartment, start by talking with your neighbors and attempt to come to an amicable solution. Uh, explain your problems with the smoke. Rather than assume that everyone understands the dangers of secondhand smoke, before you talk with your neighbors, you may gather some basic information about the health risk associated with secondhand smoke. Because they're idiots. Mansplain and to your neighbors. They're going to they're gonna love being talked to about the health Yeah. Dangers. Search Did online you know for brochures. Smoking's bad for you? Search online for brochures and information. You know those times that your neighbor comes to you with brochure? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you may find materials that you can use on the websites of health organizations such as the American Health Association or the American Lung Association. Particularly, if any of the neighboring tenants have children, they should be aware and concerned of secondhand smoke coming in their apartments. Uh, for example, you might say, I don't mean to step on your toes, but my daughter has asthma. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what, if, what if you don't have the convenient daughter with asthma 
Uh, well, you lie about Make it, one obviously. up. Have a daughter with asthma. Lie about having a daughter with asthma. <laughs> Hire a daughter with asthma. Yeah, rent a small child in on, on the scam. But I don't have asthma. Also, can I go back to my parents? Shut up! <laughs> uh, consider, consider sending a written letter to the smokers. Oh, wow. Be as <laughs> passive-aggressive as possible. <laughs> your neighbors who smoke may take your complaints more seriously if you send them a written letter. Even if they don't, the written letter provides evidence that you attempted an amicable solution before involving your landlord or other authorities. Guys, there's a lot of misinformation on the internet, and I'm sorry about that, but I'm going to clear it up because uh, I want to tell you all how to develop telekinesis. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Finally, <laughs> so Living to develop te- to develop telekinesis, start oh, by med- move me. Start by meditating every day and visualizing objects around you in your mind. <laughs> uh, that's that's all. That's all. Then you need to get in the zone. Okay, so you'll need to work on your visualization skills. I think I think you actually should be just just skip straight to part three in this. Oh, you bet. Skip skip to part part. Understanding the science. Three, understanding the science. Okay, so uh, you need to understand how telekinesis can help and how it is possible. Energy can be defined as the capacity to do work. Nope. <laughs> what? What? It's <laughs> energy is the capacity. That's the that's the technical definition of the word energy. It's true. I, 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 I just I now looked it up on science.gov. article over boots <laughs> ring gear. Okay, good point. <laughs> Uh, but instead of using physical kinetic energy to move such things, one should use chemical energy already stored in the body. <laughs> Pee on shit to move it. <laughs> Although we cannot see the energy with the naked eye, it's still very much there. Okay, here's the, here's here's what the first law of thermodynamics states, right? Okay. First law of thermodynamics states that energy mm-hmm. cannot be created or destroyed, although it can be transferred or changed from one form to another. The energy of any system and its surrounding is constant. A system may absorb its energy from its surroundings, or it may give up some energy from its surroundings, but the total energy content of the system is always the same. Telekinesis is not magic, although probably mistaken. It's technically sorcery. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was wizardry. <laughs> Um, st- step two is a guy bending spoons with his mind. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, energy uh, flows through the body. Uh, you need to find yourself an ideal condition, cool area, completely relax your body. Uh, whatever. Uh, be very clear on how, the step three, you wish to manipulate the system. Decide on which theory you wish to pull, push, or spin the system. Spin. Yeah. Rotate. Uh, and uh, finally, step four, uh, focus on energy and direct it toward the system. Uh, how you choose to do this depends on you. <laughs> so, yeah, not me. If, it, if you, fucked it up, that. Then you fucked it up, moron. Hey, uh, hey, Lemon. Yeah. Skip, like, right down to the bottom of the page and just give us a list of things we'll need. Down to the bottom of the page. The, the things you'll need. Here's the things you'll need to develop telekinesis, okay? <laughs> These are objects you can use as your system. Number one, aluminum ball. Crumple up foil, right? Okay. Keeps Number your cash two, small, busy. Small glass marble on a wooden floor. <laughs> Skin. Pick it up off the <laughs> more floor. Uh, then you need a spilt puddle of water. Mm-hmm. Any oh, are we trying to keep robbers from getting in our house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put an electric wire in it. Um, then you need a feather, uh, a potato chip bag. Because yeah, you're going to be, ex- lo- be expending an awful lot of energy uh, <laughs> yeah. creating cyballs. You're going to get hungry, so. Yeah. Uh, then you need a low voltage uh, what lot of uh, a low voltage light bulb, the pencil you stare at when you should be working. <laughs> oh, my mom wrote this. Okay. I don't have to work, Linda. Get off my fucking back. Float Linda out of the room and into a pit. Uh, some other shit are related with you. Yay! Yay! <laughs> uh, some related shit are uh, are uh, 
uh, related wiki house are uh, remove black magic spells, uh, use the law of attraction, find your lucky numbers in numerology, uh, and remember your past lives. Frank West! Uh, the most recent WikiHow article that you posted seemed rather helpful. Can you uh, teach us all about your uh, tips here? Frank West? Oh, no. Oh, no. For, oh. The first thing you need to learn about WikiHow is how to... <laughs> your mic. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I literally started talking like fucking stuff. I'm sure directly. that's a 100% safe. I'm good at this. <laughs> how to avoid being called a noob. And I clicked on the picture, and it's taking a million. Okay, there we go. Whether you're new to online gaming or have played online games for years, you've almost certainly seen people called noobs. You may wonder how to avoid being called a noob. Step one, recognize the different meanings and variations behind the word noob. <laughs> <laughs> a new player. This is as non-insulting as it gets. Noob, but with O's. An annoying player. This is not necessarily referred to a new player, but they go hand in hand. Noob with the N E W B, abbreviation of newbie. If you are not trying to be insulting, stick with newbie to refer to a new player. Oh, boy, boy, boy. Use an appropriate original username or character name. Don't create a childish lead speak username such as I pones or as you all. Ooh, that's a good one though. Try to create a name unique to you, one that probably doesn't have numbers like Bob One Five Five Four Six. <laughs> If you are a famous person one day, you want to be named as Phoenix Dragon, not Phoenix 1588 Drag 4 slash Random Blarg. Frank West, this is really helpful, but I, I also noticed that you posted a guide on how to annoy people in elevators. Yeah. <laughs> you want that one instead? Can you teach me how to annoy people on elevators? I was, I was well, born with that skill. Step one, call them noobs. <laughs> step one, call them noobs. Step one, push all the buttons. <laughs> when someone comes in saying, I've got this before you push all the buttons. <laughs> 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 oh, Step God. two, make a dinging noise at each floor. I love that <laughs> You can even sing the word ding on each floor like notes in a scale. <laughs> Getting higher as oh you preach. Oh, my God. Oh, fuck. Yeah, like, just have one of those soundboards wherever you go. <laughs> you can make other noises if you prefer, such as a burp calling or an explosion sound. <laughs> Step three, talk to your reflection in the mirror. You could look Yay! at each other, trying to catch different angles and say, all right, all right, now we're talking very loudly. <laughs> this is good. I'm writing this down. This is so good. <laughs> Step four, dance to the elevator music. Don't worry about dancing well. You can even do a dance that doesn't go with the music. Like the chicken <laughs> dance with the classical music. <laughs> Step five, announce every floor. Yay! So like, everyone going to floor 10, get off now. No time to dilly tell. You can also put people onto the elevator saying all aboard the elevator. Oh my god. <laughs> Wait, I tax wrote this. Well, you say that and then there's step six. Step yeah. six exclaim that you've lost a beast. <laughs> oh no, my beast! <laughs> oh, back. Coming from the bottom floor to the top, as soon as the door closes, explain that you've lost your tarantula or snake or scorpion, but confirm that it is somewhere on the elevator. God! If well, you're worried about find my scorpion, in well, this if you're worried about it causing panic, make it an imaginary beast, such as a niffler or unicorn. <laughs> Oh, yes, my unicorn. No one will ever be able to disprove that within five minutes. <laughs> Help, I've lost my unicorn ding. <laughs> Bill I'm trying to do all of the annoying things at once. Step <laughs> seven, build in or add something to the elevator. For example, build a Lego city in the middle yep. of the yep. elevator. Yep, do that. How tall is, is this building? <laughs> if the elevator is big enough, lay a twister mat on the ground and ask people if they want to play. <laughs> I remember that sketch from Trigger Happy TV. <laughs> Step eight. Talk to people. Greet yeah, people with a that, handshake. That's, that's about ask, the most annoying thing you can do on an elevator. Then ask them to call you captain. <laughs> oh, that is a good one, though. 
when there are a lot of people here, so you're probably wondering why I've gathered you all here. Today. Yeah, classic. Uh, Frank West scrolling down to the very bottom. Uh, do you have any <laughs> tips? Do you have any tips for how to annoy people in an tips? elevator? Tips. Way tips. Way down at the bottom. Way down at the bottom. Oh, all the way. Oh, wow, that's a long article, huh? Yeah, tips. sure is. There's a lot Run of different ways to annoy people. <laughs> there sure are. Tips. Run into an elevator with a scared look on your face, then hide under someone or clutch their knees, and after the doors close, say innocently, are they gone? Carry a big box labeled toenails. <laughs> Pretend you're drowning. Medical, <laughs> medical toenails. It's, it's so good though. <laughs> Run up to someone and say, I finally found you. Why did you leave me? It has been years. Offer to spit shine people's shoes for a dollar. Hey, they come <laughs> <laughs> when there's only one person in the elevator with you, stand really close to them and say, sorry, it's crowded, but don't move. It's better to be subtle with your pranks than to make to really make someone subtle. mad. Subtle! <laughs> yeah, this has been pretty subtle. <laughs> Look, you laugh, but this is, by, this is by far the most accurate <laughs> and <laughs> helpful. I'm not sure oh, exactly who uh, Sanguinary Novel is flicking off right now, but I'm pretty sure it does. <laughs> Sit or lie on the floor of the elevator, and if anyone that's what you were doing, yell, what did you do that for at the top of your lungs? Maybe that's what's on the pa- the like paper that the girl's looking at in the Wookie oh, Howard. Okay, yeah, yeah. Continuously ask people why they aren't taking the stairs. <laughs> it's better for you, you know. It's healthier. So good. Oh, that is good, though. It's the best article. It's the fuck you turkey hand. <laughs> hand turkey. It's really good. Oh, oh it is hand turkey. It's, it's a fuck you hand turkey. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, poor Tex. Uh, yeah. I know that uh, the Discord is full of all sorts of WikiHow articles. There's a lot of them. I'm looking at one. I wonder if you're looking at the same one. You tell me, poor Tex, what WikiHow article would you like to read? What, of just any of them? <laughs> no, I'm saying one of the, you pasted in, uh, I think, probably more than one. It might have, it might, I mean, I think I did. Are you looking at the same WikiHow article that I'm looking at? Because mine's expert reviewed. <laughs> expert reviewed? I didn't see that part on, yeah. on any of them. Well, then I will, like, I'll just give you my link here because uh, okay. the, the expert reviewed WikiHow article is how to know if you've become addicted to wearing diapers. Ah, uh, <laughs> yes, God. <laughs> oh, God, it's happening again. <laughs> Sorry, I thought it might have been how to do tricks with your fuzzy magic work. <laughs> Yeah. Can I sing Billy Joel again? <laughs> <laughs> so, how to know you've become addicted to wearing diapers as an adult? So, you babies, you're fine. <laughs> Your addiction is handled in a different way. Uh, number one, monitor whether your thoughts are consumed by wearing diapers. <laughs> Featuring a guy with a thought bubble. <laughs> huh. kind of I guess I am always thinking about diapers. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I'm thinking about them right now. <laughs> you may find yourself continuously thinking about diapers and wearing diapers. If you think that diapers and diaper wearing constantly in a way that interferes with your daily living, it may signal a problem. Persistent thoughts about obtaining a certain thing can be a marker of addiction. Being addicted you may to struggle to get things. Yes. You may struggle to get things done because you are thinking about diapers. Has <laughs> your work productivity declined? <laughs> or are you finding it harder to get things done around the house? Sorry, boss. I'll get those diapers to you right away. I mean, report. <laughs> uh, number two. Ask yourself if your diaper wearing interferes with daily living. Uh, I guess this is the woman wearing diapers, or is she upset? I don't know. If you struggle. Ooh. To engage in normal functional behavior, such as getting up, going to work, buying groceries, and cleaning because of your diaper wearing, this also may be a problem. Interfering behaviors can be emotionally painful, and it's important to regain control of behaviors before they spiral out of control. And then this is another guy just thinking of three people. Yeah, Note yeah, if yeah. diapers interfere with relationships. Linda, I wonder if they it, were diapers. <laughs> Those other people. Like yeah. Oh God! Oh God! If you've had difficulty Frank relating, West, Frank West just posted a link to wikihow.com/slash how to choose a bridal diaper. Ooh, <laughs> it's my special day. Oh, you make the, you make the bridesmaids wear like no. ugly teal green diapers. This this well. might be a sign that you're addicted to diapers. <laughs> Boy, this dress sure is hard to get. Wait, I've got a solution. Well. 
Can it's, you just can you just read the step one in that article? Cortex, take step one in that article, step please. Step one, okay. Understand that the very existence of bridal divers is unsubstantiated. <laughs> 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 the mythical bridal diver. <laughs> Need Robert Stack to narrate the, the bridal diaper story. It belongs in a museum. <laughs> On October 27th. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jimmy Franks. Uh, yeah. Jimmy, oh. Jimmy Franks, you pasted a bunch. Uh, I don't know. What do you like? Just cho choose oh. whatever. I know that you, you know, posted a bunch. I know um, that you did post uh, uh, how to become a Pastafarian. You fuck. <laughs> I think I think that's uh, that's good. I think I think I think that's some we could all use some religion. It is it is the day of our Lord, uh, after all. <laughs> I suppose it always is. Yeah. Uh, but although I also have uh, if uh, uh, how to put a curse on someone. I did see that. I was also seeing uh, how to cosplay as a dog. <laughs> Yeah, that's probably you got to cosplay as a dog. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you have to, yeah, and you yeah, never yeah. know when you might. Uh, uh, yeah, take 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 tools. take whatever take whatever yep. speaks to you. Yep. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, some people cosplay as their favorite characters. Why not cosplay as your favorite pet? You don't have to walk on all fours to cosplay as a dog. Match your personality and your look to the dog breed of your choice to cosplay as man's best friend. Step one. Method one. Dressing like a dog. Number one, choose your dog breed. Oftentimes, dog owners will choose a breed of dog, which looks a lot like them. Now might be a good place like to start. Dog. If you get curly hair, you might want to try Cocker Spaniel or a Poodle. People with straight hair can pull off the look of shiny, short-haired dogs like Dobermans and Dalmatians. Thin people can dress as Greyhounds or Whippets, and for a tough, strong look, try a Bulldog or Pit Bull. Uh, so yeah, sure. So Step two. Okay. Why are we doing this? <laughs> Step two, wear clothes, which give the impression of your dog breed, but still look cool. <laughs> all, all, I'm, like an all I'm seeing is drawings of people that look fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone looks super cool in here. Cosplay costumes are different from your average Halloween costume, but you don't want to cover yourself in a big dog outfit. Instead, you want to highlight that you yourself are the dog. Fucking Dalmatian shirts and <laughs> tails sticking out of their pants. Yeah. Wait, hey, cool. where's Wear some shorts, shorts or leggings and a shirt in the color of your breed. You can even choose a full short skirt or tutu if you're dressing as a poodle or another fun fluffy dog like a Pomeranian. <laughs> Set three. San, I'm sorry, sanguinary novel drawing Gollum wearing a bridal <laughs> veil <laughs> holding diapers <laughs> is real good. <laughs> Yay! Oh. Step Ooh, three, get some dog yay! ears. Get some dog ears, dummy. Popular option for getting an animal look is a spirit hood. These are large furry hats with long sides which draped down and ended in mittens with paw prints on the underside. This is a great start to dog costume. Great start. <sighs> yep. Uh, that was step four. Paint your face to look like a dog. You're going to want to focus on painting the nose and mouth of a dog by tracing around the tip of your nose in black paint or pink, pink paint. For playful look, paint a red or pink tongue over one side of your bottom lip and extending <laughs> past it to look like your tongue is hanging out. Outline the tongue with the same black line. Uh, yep, still uh, on on uh, on model for looking cool there. Yeah, yeah. Step yeah. five: change your hands and feet into paws. Become a manimal. <laughs> if you have a spirit hood, your front paws are already covered. Oh. <laughs> Not as simple enough to spare a mitten, but you could wear on their own or decorate with furry material or felt. <sighs> Find a fluffy boot like furry Uggs for a long-haired look. Step six. Tie it off with a tail. No dog costume is complete without a tail. Depending on the breed you chose, you may want thin and tail or fluffy tail. You can achieve these looks using felt or yarn in the appropriate colors. This is step seven. Mm -hmm. You know what? Fuck it. Uh, at least skip to <laughs> Jimmy Franks is doesn't like matter. Running out of gas. <laughs> Method two: behaving like a dog. All right. Uh, uh, it's so, uh, it's, it's uh, oh, there. so just just yeah. Just one moment. Uh, yeah. So in WikiHow, I typed in fetish. Yeah. Just to see what it would yeah. happen. Yeah. An overwhelming number of these mentioned diapers. <laughs> just, yeah. just throw that out there. That's I mean, what you need the most. Uh, there's help some, on. there's some foot stuff too, but like, yeah. I'm just looking cool. through recently edited, and like a solid fifth of them are related. Like, there's a whole bunch that are in a row about adult blankets. And adult blanket sleepers. Yeah, no, Wiki Wiki has into pee for sure. Like, like, there's a lot of stuff about peeing. And then uh, right underneath that is enjoy feeling like a kid again from the same person. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> hmm. uh, I'm like an agenda. Isfahan, uh, take anything. I don't know. Take any. There's so much. Okay, today we're gonna learn how to prepare a pop tart. 
<laughs> Finally! <laughs> Alright, folks. Uh, many have tried, all have failed. <laughs> get out your, how, get out. how many steps are there? Oh, wow. There's, uh... Well, first you have to measure seven your steps. toaster to make sure there's that seven it... steps. <laughs> okay, so how to prepare your... yourself for the Pop-Tart article. Emotionally. Pencils and your notebooks and, uh, okay. Pop-Tarts are an American tradition and a beloved breakfast food. Sadly, some people prepare them tradition. improperly. Tradition? What? Tradition? tradition, yeah. Maybe Baseball, the apple pie, and Pop-Tarts. Yeah. Luckily, there's an easy guide to make good Pop-Tarts correctly. Okay, step one. Go to your favorite supermarket. Ask an employee to direct you to the aisle containing Pop-Tarts. <laughs> make day, intense sir, eye madam. contact with them while you do this. Give me the Pop-Tarts. <laughs> step two. Choose your favorite. So you don't know how to make pop tarts, but you already have a favorite. Okay. Yep. One with a little frosting, a lot of icing, or one plain. There are many flavors of pop tarts. Okay. Yay! 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 Oh, we hit the jackpot. Seven, 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 seven. I just, ding, ding, uh, ding. Wow. I just like to oh, point wow. out that, that that was a it was a donation that we got from Kumquat. There, it's hard to read because the text of his name covers his. Uh, yeah, he yeah he brought it up there, but it was his, his comment says, "How not to sleep and read about diapers instead <laughs> <laughs> while liking a boy <laughs> and being like Naruto." <laughs> okay, so um, open the Pop Tart box and remove a Pop Tart from one of the inner bags. <laughs> Remember, a bag comes with two Pop Tarts. Place it in your toaster. <laughs> Remove. Bag. Don't throw it out. <laughs> Oh shit! There was a bonus one in there. Okay, I'm already, I'm already lost. <laughs> okay, well I'll slow it down for you. Okay, Thank step you. four: toast is toast on a low heat setting. Wait till it pops up. <laughs> pop tarts actually pop up. Okay. I mean, it's depending on your toaster, sure. <laughs> and it's right there in the name. Put it in an oven. <laughs> Remove the pop tart carefully and place on a plate. That's step five. Okay. Step six. All right, Nick. Now I want you to write this down. Allow it to cool for. 35 seconds, not 34, not 36, 35 seconds. Mm -hmm. Then step seven, eat your cooled Pop-Tart and enjoy. And to illustrate, there is a Pop-Tart with a bite taken out of it in case you uh, hey, uh, hey, thanks a lot, uh, WikiHow uh, writer guy. Uh, I'm, I'm the community of WikiHow. I just have a couple questions for you. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, I'm the community. I have some Q&A. Um, uh, are there different heating techniques for different flavors? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, oh! Did you get strawberry without frosting? Well, <laughs> no. They they should all be the same. Okay. The joy of cooking pop tarts. Okay. How long do I leave them in the toaster? And do I have to flip the toaster horizontally or something? <laughs> the whole what? toaster. What? <laughs> What no, is no. It? I to do this, that. this is why WikiHow exists. Should I like jam oh, three forks into it? <laughs> what if you want to fire the pop tart at an assailant? <laughs> no need how to do flip. I just... hot rod my toaster. <laughs> I like how like like you're not you're not allowed to acknowledge that they're fucking with you. You just have to no need to flip. Just stand, leave it standing, and put it on the lowest setting. The pop tarts are already cooked. You're just it can it be cooked in a real toaster though? <laughs> yes, it can. Just make sure to heat it on the lowest setting so you don't burn it. Please, for the love of God, the lowest setting. <laughs> okay. Also, how can I get a piece of pop tart out of my boyfriend's nostril? <laughs> <laughs> That's that has not been answered. <laughs> you're, you're just gonna have to get in there with a uh, with your he's tongue. Just, he's just gonna have to learn to live with, with it. With the really. same yeah. fork that you used to pry it out of the toaster in the first place. Just think of it as a part of your boyfriend now. Oh man, uh, they are as one. Just wanted to go uh, into uh, a couple of these donations because uh, there's uh, really good, uh, just a lot of uh, a lot of nice things. Uh, Amy really wants us to read uh, "Be a Cholo." We'll take a look at that in a second. Uh, <laughs> uh, Toaster says thanks to Frank West, everyone else too, but mostly Frank West. Uh, and and uh, Boots Rangier says, "No, seriously, fuck this podcast." <laughs> <laughs> How to fuck this podcast? Get it. Steps. Put in a seventy-five dollar donation just uh, so we could make that statement heard. <laughs> the same statement, um, same amount, the same statement I made last year. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's tradition uh, now, like a pop tart. Uh, check, check. I think that's you. I think it's you. What do you? What do you got there? 
Um, am I doing? Am I doing cholos or? I don't. F- sure. I don't know. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Do cholos. <laughs> All right. Does this does this look like a train on the rails, motherfucker? <laughs> uh, I was under the assumption it was a well-oiled machine, Lemon. <laughs> That's not what I use my lube for. Good uh, call. I, I put some new so lady first... frenzy art in the uh, in the stream for us. Oh so, yeah. Step one, get the crisp tees. Buy some plain tees, striped polos, some plaid short sleeve button shirts. Pro Club, Dickies, and Sunwear are the right brands for plain tees. Uh, shirts shouldn't be too tight or small. Wear tall tees and make sure they're oversized. The best colors for your crisp tees are black, white, dark blue, dark green, gray, brown, and beige. Uh, shirts with Catholic imagery, low riders, smile now, cry later. Aztec <laughs> imagery or Los Angeles can also be worn. Oh my god, okay, stop, 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 just for a second, look at the stream. (laughs) 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 I'm eating bad poetry. Magnificent. (laughs) Okay, sorry, keep going. Wear the right, step two, wear the right shirts and jackets, wear flannel shirts with plaid button downs, get yourself a pet a flannel Pendleton shirt and wear it over a plain t-shirt button it all the way up or just on the top button another way to wear a button shirt is to button only the first or second buttons <laughs> at the very bottom you can wear the shirt open with the neck collar flattened kind of like a blazer make sure your shirt is creased crisp and fresh at all times make sure it matches your dickies and your shoes in the winter <laughs> wear plaid flannel jackets instead you can also wear a poncho for the winter Am I allowed to listen to anything but Cypress Hill or like just Cypress Hill? We'll, we'll get to that. Okay. Um, so then okay. there's wearing the right pants and that's the same <laughs> shit and wear Jesus. the right shoes and that's the same shit and then get the right cut and that's the same shit. Now, yeah. <laughs> let's accessorize to look fresh, shall we? Okay. Okay, wear knee-high white socks. Military what? belts are a must. What? Buy a black beanie. <laughs> Pull it down low, almost over your eyes. Secondary oh, novel drew how to be a churro. <laughs> <laughs> step one, one be delicious <laughs> I can step that. two cover yourself in powdered sugar oh, way ahead of you <laughs> excuse me uh, pull it, uh, wear black sunglasses you can get a pair of looks at the 99 set store wear a rosary cross or plain silver or gold chain around your neck don't overdo it just have one or two accessories you're always seen with is enough uh, you want to get your tattoos, uh, yeah. and you want to keep it crisp and clean. Now, to act like a cholo, you got to lean like a cholo, right? Oh, yeah, Cholos sure. always go boogie to their music, no matter what it, what it is. So if you can't really dance, you can always lean like a cholo. The idea of leaning like a cholo was popularized <laughs> by Down, a.k.a. Kilo's 2000 hit song, Lean Like a Cholo. Ah, <laughs> I should have known. Though the song is meant to be fun, it does talk about the idea of leaning like a cholo, which is a stance you can take when you're at the club trying to get girls just hanging out. To lean sorry, like sorry, a cholo. Sorry, 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 sorry. I, 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 a lot of words, a lot of words on me in these 24 hours. Do you mean to tell me that the song Lean Like a Cholo makes references to leaning like a cholo? <laughs> it does. <laughs> that is, that's in the content. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I like- so now- I like that half of these drawings skip past the idea of, like, be Mexican. (laughs) That is secondary, sir. That is secondary. Well, so let's... let's... There's a lot of white dudes wearing plaid Listen, listen, listen. I'm I'm really pale and I'm white, but deep down inside, I am Latino. That's why I started a a community online called Mexican. You guys can follow it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, so, Lemon, would you like to learn how to talk like a child so you fit in a little better? Oh, God. Yes. Maybe. So this means speaking Spanglish. Oh, which God. Is, that's mixing Spanish, Bad ideas. Spanish and English words Bad ideas. in sentences. <laughs> Say a few words in English, then a few words in Spanish, or vice versa. Finding a good natural mix when you talk. This is where being a cholo might get tough for you, who, for those of you who aren't Chicano or Hispanic. <laughs> In that, yeah, you might you encounter caught. some difficulties. Yeah, yeah. It will <laughs> kick your ass. Yeah, you... I'm, I'm not Hispanic. I don't know Spanish, <laughs> but it I think might... I got this covered. No, it's fine. I, I got you, man. It might not come natural, so the best thing you can do is practice or keep quiet. If you try too hard to say essay as every other word or naturally <laughs> flow your Spanglish, oh dear, oh, yeah, no. people will be on your ass. Oh no. Here's the key words you should know. 
add vato or bro and way or homie or essay and food oh. to the end of your sentences. <laughs> that, this, this is a crime. Yeah, <laughs> even even <laughs> I want to stab this person at this point. <laughs> when you're shouting out to your homies, say Q vole carnal orale oh, vato. Oh, oh dear. Don't. Simone ese. No. What up, homes? This is Spider-Man, <laughs> homie. And Simon said, Mexichan. Someone's going to die. Yeah, the chat's now saying that they're Mexichan. <laughs> Anime Mexicans. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, uh, toast? Toast? Uh, oh, yes. Okay, yeah, I'm here. Yeah. You see You see anything in there that you like? Uh, God, there's a lot. Um, I, I mean, you could start a rap battle if you really felt sorry, like I'd, it. I'd just like to interrupt for, for just a second because I still had the Pop-Tart arc open. <laughs> Yep. And there's a warning. What's that? Do not be alarmed when you open the package and see two Pop Tarts. It's perfectly normal to see two. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, yeah. I got it. Oh, my God. My side's failing me. I forgot to warn people about the second Pop Tart. <laughs> Call the police. I've been buying singles this whole time. <laughs> Is that going to go in the Nightmare Fuel TV tropes page? <laughs> There were Whoa. two pop tarts. <laughs> well, now that I know how to be a cholo, mm -hmm. I'm going to know, let you know how to start a rap battle. Ooh, yay! All right. A rap okay. battle is a verbal tussle, a contest of force where MCs flex their rap muscle. And if you want to hustle to the top <laughs> of the rap battle, rap bustle, get ready to throw down in a rap scuffle. A rap battle is a battle, but with rapping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm digging the trying to rhyme part. That. Number one, select a suitable opponent. Your spontaneous rap battle might fall flat if you challenge an unwilling opponent. <laughs> hey, want a rap battle? <laughs> Go. No. In the elevator. <laughs> Ding. What is a Pop-Tart? We just don't know. <laughs> Friends that share your interest in rap are a good choice. Uh, number two, kick off your battle at the right moment. Timing is everything. A spur of the moment rap battle can captivate onlookers, but a battle that interrupts conversation or disrupts activities could earn you contempt. Wait for pause in conversations or activities before initiating your battle. Seems like with step four, they start giving like sample lyrics. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna, I'll skip to that. Yeah. Number four, open with a hook. And let's just go right to the hook. You claim you're a fan. Watch rap battles all the time. The gauntlet's being thrown, son, so spit your best battle rhyme. Now's not the time to defer or to whine, to shrug in a sign that you don't mind the sublime chance to climb to the top. Enough oh, said. You boy. go. I'll stop. Oh, boy. Uh, 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 Jack Chick, uh, just real yeah. quick. Uh, Spooks uh, just showed up in the chat here just to point out uh, one particular uh, sentence that we missed from the Cholo article. All right, I got you. I got you. Fuck. The best way to hook up with a hyena is to do it the Chicano way. Say, what's up, que paso? You want to go for a cruise in my Lolo? Oh, no, no. Oh, oh, no, no. no. <laughs> okay. Or simply, que pasa, mija? Any other race will take it wrong, but if you ask a Latina that, she'll take it as a compliment. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, as long as she's not racist. Yeah, <laughs> she's the true racist. If she has a problem. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You were you were you were rap battling, weren't you? <laughs> uh, yes, um, yeah, yeah. The subsequent steps also have sample. What's up, French toast? You want to go for a cruise in my Lolo? <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Uh, where? Is, okay, I'm gonna skip down to the prepping for battle. Uh, step, yeah, three. Yeah. Anticipate yeah, step three. The, step three. Yep. Anticipate the attacks of your opponents. Unless the rules state otherwise, your opponent can use anything against you in a rap battle. So we got to be prepared. For example, if you have a large nose, you might deflect this if you use, if used against you, saying he mocks my nose, but you don't need a trunk to smell his crap rhymes and know they're junk. Ooh. Wow. Wow. I'm going to take out everybody at my Christian school. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I got a, I got a good idea. What's that? Number five for prep is rap using words that start with the same sound. <laughs> I also looked at the step five is just called rap about your opponent. <laughs> like, yes, that would be part of the rap. <laughs> this is called alliteration. Here, let me give you an example. Fans filter the fighters fit for Yay. Yeah. We're two hundred dollars away from an even eight thousand. Two hundred from an even eight, and uh, seconds away and from one it as minute. Well. One minute left of the thing. 
<laughs> uh, okay, I'll, <laughs> fans filter for the fights fit for first place for favorite fl- phrases. I'll flood your flow like forty days for nights of folklore. Forget fighting, you'll finish fameless. Oh man. Uh, so F plus, we did it. We did it. We did, we did it. it. It's we over. It. We we made it. We we, we never have it. to do this again. We did yep. it again. Yeah. Uh, right. Boots, Boots talked all of us into this because he is a he is a monster. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Yay, monster! Yeah, <laughs> made out of pain. I make myself suffer the most too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, do work. we have an outro song? Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I but, now regret everything. I mean. Yeah. I mean Boots, to be fair, you did only do the intro song, the full intro song. Okay, you want me to do the whole song? I actually do want you to do the whole for the whole song once. Let's turn the webcam on, though. That's fine. This guy's listening to Butter? Or maybe he's listening to Melita. <laughs> Garbage day! <laughs> I boot, you're so good on that. <laughs> it's just running your palm back and forth along the soundboard. <laughs> Garbage day is here at last. Ridiculous have all amassed. With all the talents that they bring to share with you terrible things. We're raising money for the Southern Poverty Law Center now. And we're doing it all day. It's garbage, it's garbage day. Garbage day. Hey. Yay! 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 Uh, before I Yay. had my laptop closer to me, and it was easier to read these lyrics. <laughs> we got a new amount. <laughs> yeah, we're actually, yeah, we're actually at eight grand. We made it to eight grand. Yeah, uh, yeah. Not just eight grand. It's got the clink film. Yeah, eight grand and sixty nine cents. Nice. Thanks, Kumquat. <laughs> <laughs> We've got statue fetishes and drug reports. Oh my God! Statue yep. fetishes and drug reports. Juggalo poetry and hating sports. David Taylor's thoughts on Greenland. Rapping with J. W. Freeman. Artists drawing every hour. Spirits growing gradually sour. All that and much more on Garbage Day. Yay! We slow it down a little bit for the last verse. Okay. All right. Jimmy Franks is making a choice. Bunny Bread's using a high pitched voice. Lemon's critiquing CSS. We're all a bit worried about Frank West. Healy's is falling off the wagon while Portex imitates a dragon. Nutshell Gulag's cat is crying. Victor Laszlo's soul is dying. John is making terrible puns. Isfahan is polishing guns. Kumquat searching for no. Harry Potter. Jack Chick's referencing slaughter. Stog is convincing the British. Bump Girl's getting slightly skittish. Bo's eyes just sending along and I'm still singing this fucking song. Yeah! <laughs> and I have the, the, the really good ending of I didn't write a very good ending for this song. Garbage day. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Yay! Yeah. 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 Oh, we're ending with boob Garbage 69. Boob 69, done. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Thanks, everybody. Oh shit. Oh, you're wonderful. Uh yeah, we'll see you again. But I'm gonna I'll probably be awake for another three hours, yeah, honestly. That's how this works. Yeah, seriously. Oh. All right, talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs>